I remember one of the very first Windows laptops I reviewed was the MSI GS65 Stealth, the 2018 model. I didn't review the 2019 model because it looked basically identical minus a CPU and GPU update, but this one has been redesigned basically everywhere. Very modern looking, and that was a big reason for why I liked the Blade 15 so much in the past. It's also got a 100 watt hour battery, which I'm pretty sure no other 15 inch gaming laptop has. There's a lot of other changes as well, which we'll talk about as we go through this laptop, but just based on the appearance and the spec sheet alone, it looked like a very big update, so I was pretty excited to check this thing out. Okay, let's talk about the build first, starting with the design. They redesigned the entire laptop this year, inside and out, and I think they did a really good job here. Very minimal, not just on the lid, but on the inside as well. They removed the gold chamfer around the laptop and around the trackpad. The logo on the lid is now black instead of gold. The exhaust vents now have a simple rectangular design. The hinge looks and feels better, and I think it stands out as being one of very few gaming laptops on the market that look really good in 2020. Enough to where I personally wouldn't put any weight into the design of the Blade 15 if I was deciding between these two laptops. In terms of strength and build quality, I think it's about the same as the previous GS65. The area above the keyboard is reinforced with metal, so there's very little flex, and the screen is still made of plastic, so it's fairly soft. However, one thing that I did notice while using this thing is that the texture feels pretty nice. I can't remember if the GS65 felt like cheap paint, but I do know that quite a large number of gaming laptops use a finish that feels like cheap plastic, and yeah, there's basically nothing to really criticize here. They did a great job with the design, strength, and feel of the laptop. It's been nearly two years since I reviewed the GS65, so unfortunately I can't give any comparisons to the previous model in terms of the keyboard and trackpad, but judging from photos and what I can remember of it, this should be very similar to the previous model. It's got a very shallow key travel, similar to the Blade 15 or the Magic Keyboard on the new MacBooks, but in terms of tactility, I would say it's quite good. Subjectively speaking, I actually enjoyed using this keyboard to a certain extent. It's not good to the point where I would praise it, but everything aside from the shallow key travel is done fairly well, so it kind of makes up for that. For example, I like the fact that the keycaps are nice and big. I've noticed that this does improve my accuracy by a noticeable amount compared to something like the Helios 300. I mean, those keycaps are tiny. I also think 75% is the best layout for laptops because you have full size arrow keys, it doesn't interfere with the right shift key, and it only takes up one extra column. The trackpad, as far as I can remember, is basically the same as last year. It's very wide, but not particularly tall. It's got a glass surface, very smooth. Uh, I would describe it as a slick texture to where my finger just glides along the surface, kind of like skating on ice. The tracking accuracy is good in that it's responsive and it knows when I want to move my cursor, but the directional accuracy is quite poor. It always sort of deviates away from where I want to go. And I suppose that's not an issue if you move your cursor relatively slowly, but if you try and move your cursor quickly, like dragging it across your screen, you never quite land exactly where you want to be. So very good hardware, but the software is lacking, particularly in the tracking accuracy. One thing I hadn't really considered with why most gaming laptops don't have upward firing speakers beside the keyboard was if there was any room for them to begin with, and it turns out there actually isn't. A lot of gaming laptops will have exhaust vents on the sides of the laptop in addition to the rear exhaust, moving the ports closer to the middle of the laptop, and that prevents you from placing speakers beside the keyboard. And as much as I personally value good laptop speakers, it's pretty obvious that thermals and performance matters far more than the speaker quality on a gaming laptop. I am curious as to whether it's possible to have the speakers project up from the top intake grill, kind of like the 12 inch MacBook. And I say that because when my hand is on the WASD keys, I notice that my palm blocks the left speaker grill. In an ideal situation, I would project the mid-range and treble up from above the keyboard using a pair of drivers and have two separate subwoofers project downwards near the front of the laptop. If they do that, these would probably be the best speakers on a gaming laptop by far. Not that most people will care about speakers on a gaming laptop, but this is also a premium laptop targeted towards a small demographic looking for the very best. All right, let's talk about the screen next. My unit is configured with a 1080p 240Hz panel, which you can upgrade to a 1080p 300Hz or a 4K 60. 
Now, funny story, right? So the first time I measured this screen, I had the brightness all the way down and I got some ridiculously dim result for the brightness. I was ready to bash MSI for putting a garbage display on a premium laptop, but I measured it again, this time at full brightness, and it's actually really good. It's a bit brighter than the 280 nit average on most 144Hz panels that you see. Uh, color accuracy and color gamut are basically spot on, very good for a high refresh panel. The contrast ratio could be higher, but it's not something I consider particularly bad. It's right about average. Really, the only panel that's a big step up would be the ones on the Legion 7i. They have a 240Hz HDR panel rated at 500 nits. That's the same as the MacBook Pros and the iMac for a point of reference. Both of those things I would consider to be a novelty rather than a necessity, but since this is a premium laptop, I hope MSI will use them for their next refresh. Fast and great image quality. For ports, you have power in, Thunderbolt 3, HDMI, a USB-A port, Ethernet on the right, followed by two more USB-As, a USB-C port, this one is not Thunderbolt 3, and a headphone jack. Oh, and a cool feature with this is you can charge the laptop through the USB Type-C port. It's only 65 watts, so you can either use it to power it for light use or extend your battery life while gaming. It obviously won't fully power this thing if you're pushing the CPU or GPU, but it's nice to have that flexibility. In terms of performance, it's a bit complicated because of the way MSI manages their thermals, not just on this laptop or even on their gaming laptops as a whole. I've noticed that every single MSI laptop that I've reviewed sets a CPU temperature limit of 90 degrees Celsius instead of Intel's 100 degree limit. And I know that was done in hardware because that limit persisted in macOS as well on their P65 laptop, so it's not like a Windows only thing. So I guess we should talk about thermals first and then performance. With the default fan curve and Prime95 to stress just the CPU, you're looking at about 50 watts at 91 degrees. However, if you run the fans at full speed, you're now looking at 65 watts at 90 degrees, a very big improvement. Unfortunately, I don't have any measurements of other laptops at 90 degrees for a direct comparison, but if you were to extrapolate how much power it might be able to dissipate if it were allowed to run up to 100 degrees like most other gaming laptops, you could reasonably expect it to dissipate 75 watts, which is right about average for a thin and light 15 inch gaming laptop. Uh, not sure about AMD, this is specifically for Intel's H series CPUs. So cooling performance is good, but because they limit the temperature to around 90 degrees on the CPU, the performance you get with just the CPU, so no GPU, is less than ideal. If they gave us the option to set a temperature limit ourselves, maybe in the BIOS for example, this wouldn't be an issue. But unfortunately, we don't get a choice here. However, for gaming, it's a little bit different. So most Intel gaming laptops will need to throttle down the CPU when you're also hitting the graphics card, which ends up placing this right about average in terms of performance. It's in between something like the Blade 15 base model and the Omen 15, which I consider to be the lower and upper end in terms of performance. Compared to something like the Helios 300, also with the six core CPU and an RTX 2060, that thing is about 5% faster. So specifically for gaming performance, where it's a mix of both the CPU and GPU, the performance is very good, but it's not quite class leading because it's configured with lower temperature limits, which is done by lowering the power consumption and therefore slower clock speeds. One of the big new features that made me very interested in this laptop was the 100 watt hour battery. Very few laptops have batteries this big, and I'm pretty sure this is the only gaming laptop with one this big. Uh, I was expecting 8 hours with this, but it's actually closer to like 6 to 7 hours. I also noticed that the left fan, so that's for the CPU, is always spinning audibly. Like, it's actually fairly loud. So I checked the CPU power consumption and this thing's pulling like five and a half to seven watts just idling. Uh, I uninstalled basically everything, including the Wi-Fi and speaker drivers, and nothing has changed. For reference, it should be idling at around one to one and a half watts, which would explain the unimpressive battery life. I'm not sure if it's a software issue, but other reviews seem to be consistent with my experience, so it doesn't seem like I just got an unlucky unit. A little bit unfortunate there, but I hope they figure this out because there shouldn't be anything preventing it from getting 8 hours of battery life. And that leads me on to the conclusion. I think where this laptop excels is in portability and being an overall great laptop. It's thin and relatively light. 
It's a little bit heavier than you might expect because of the massive battery, but compared to other gaming laptops on the market, it's relatively thin and light. It also has very minimal compromises, and really the only thing I dislike about it is the CPU temperature limit, the speakers, and that weird issue with the high idle power consumption. If you're looking for a high-end, thin and light 15-inch gaming laptop, this is easily one of my top three personal favorites. I believe they also brought the price down, so it now starts at $1,600, and I think the previous model was either $1,800 or $1,900 at the base configuration. But yeah, I think MSI did an excellent job with this refresh, and I think it would be even cooler to see an AMD version on the next refresh. Just imagine the power efficiency of Ryzen 4000 with a 100 watt hour battery. It would be nuts. Also, with everything going on right now, a lot of people are now starting up their own businesses, so if you want a clean, modern looking website, you can check out my website in the description. I've got some free and open source projects, and you can also commission one for me as well. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and I will be up with a video on the Alienware M15 next. So I will see you next time.